Hey y'all, check out this awesome sunrise coming up. Look at that, man. That is just absolutely incredible. It's gonna be an awesome day. Let's catch some fish. Holy cow. Beast mode, baby. Oh yeah. Y'all, I got thumped right here. I got thumped. Yeah, we're hooked up fish number one. This one ate a piece of white bass, y'all. Right now, I currently have, I got three different types of baits with me today. I've got two different types of baits on, and this one ate a piece of white bass. I got a white bass midsection on this rod, a white bass head on my other front rod up here on the left side of the kayak, and on the back of my kayak, I've got two rods baited with a live bluegill. Now, I also have some, that's a smaller blue right there to start the day, but you know what, that's a skunk buster. That's fish number one. There he is, y'all. Fish number one, small blue cat. May let him go. And then I'll show you and tell you what I'm doing here for the day. So out here on the water this morning at first light, got set up. And what I'm doing is I'm working a main channel ledge. There's a there's an outside river bend. The river bend comes around here. And I'm just on the, there was something big splashing right there. But a lot of action out here this morning but I'm on the outside of a river bend and there's some deeper holes down through here. Now, right now, I'm kind of going down into this hole. I'm trolling right now. I got my speed set at 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 69 feet, and I'm working off into this hole. And as I make my way on down river here, there's a couple more deeper holes that I'm eventually going to get to. Now, may not get to them because if I come across some fish down through here, I'll hit the spotlight button and I'll just stop where I'm at and sit there and wear those fish out. But the plan is to just cover some water and try to run into some fish that are either in these holes and hunker down that maybe I can trigger into biting or just, you know, come across some fish that are active and working up this channel and find my bait. So again, I've got three baits with me today. I've got white bass and skipjack in the cooler. And then I've got some live bluegill here in the bucket. And my plan is to save my skipjack here for as long as possible. I want to see if they'll eat these white bass first. I've done pretty good lately on white bass and I don't have many skip. I've only got two skipjack with me, but I got a whole cooler full of white bass. So I'd like to burn through those first if possible, but I'm going to spend a few hours out here this morning just working the sledge, working down in these holes here and see if we can pull out some big fish. Let me get baited up and we'll see if we can do it again. Well, that other fish ate a piece of bass, so that's what I'm going to send down. And what I'm doing here, y'all, again, I'm, I'm working my way down into deeper water. So I'm lowering my baits down as I move along just so that I'm keeping them kind of two to three feet off bottom. Like right now, I'm going to have to lower my other baits down a little bit because I want them at 68 feet deep where I'm currently at. I'd like my baits to ideally be about 65, 66 feet deep so that these fish, these catfish, they're swimming along the bottom. My baits, I want them right there in their face as I go along. So I'm going to lower my other baits down here, make sure they're at the proper depth. And we're going to keep moving along. Y'all, I got a couple things going on right now. This bluegill back here got hit. I think he's in trouble. Meanwhile, my front rod up here. I'm curious about this bluegill. I'm going to pick up on this one because I think this one might be hooked. Yeah, I'm hooked up with this one. I'm pretty sure I'm hooked up with the bluegill there too. My line is kind of at an angle back there. Sorry, y'all. I'm momentarily distracted here with these two fish I got messing around with these baits. This one here in my hand on the piece of white bass. Don't believe he's going to end up being very big, but he was heading toward my other line. Yeah, he's not. All right, so let's set him back. And then I'm going to see what's going on here. My rod tip still. That's either the bluegill running from something or something maybe has got him down there. Let's just pick up on No, that bluegill is just lively. Something was after him down there. Something wanted him, didn't get him. Let's land this one. Another small right here. Threw my bait off too, doggone him. That's all right, I got plenty of white bass. It's a skipjack I want to kind of save until I find some better quality fish. If I find some better quality fish out here today. Hope to. I hope we 
find something a little better quality than this little guy right here anyway. But that's another bite. He'll get big someday because I'm going to let him go. There he goes. All right, y'all. I'm just continuing to make my way down. I'm going to put me another bait on there, just a, another chunk of the white bass. And whatever was after that bluegill, I guess he thought better of it. He seems to have left him alone. Meanwhile, my, look at my line right here on that white bass head right there. You see how it's kind of coming down at an angle? Yeah, whatever it was, let it go. All right, Tim, we got some small fish around here. Let's see if we can get past them and find the big ones. Oh, look right here, y'all. That's on that white bass head. I was checking this bluegill. He got hit a second ago. I'm lowering him back down. We're going to reel in this one. That one's definitely hooked up. Let me just get this one back down here and <laughs> get it reset. I'm getting some bites. Uh-oh. My bluegill behind me got hit, too. Yeah, I'm, I got action going on right here, y'all. There we go. All right. Let me just set him down there a second. Reel this one in. My other bluegill behind me got hit back there. I don't, I don't think anything hooked up with it, though. Yeah, buddy. All right, well, fish number three here. I've had a few bites, just taps at my bait, especially this white bass, the cut bait. The bluegill have gotten lively. The one there that I was lowering down when this fish hit, he got hit. Something hit him pretty good. But uh, I lowered him back down there. Hopefully the next fish will be a solid hookup with him. This one here gonna kind of be more of the same oh, oh let's set him back though oh my goodness no he's on there he's on there look there he goes there he goes i knew he got hit man i knew it got hit that other one up there on the front's kind of another small about the same size i've been getting we'll see what this one is i get him up here he don't he don't feel like no monster it was a nice takedown there when that rod tip went over there, wasn't it? That's exciting. I don't care how big the fish turns out to be. Them, seeing them rods go down to the water, that gets me pumped up every time. I love that. That's the most exciting part of catfishing. Yeah, that's another, another blue right there. About the same size. That's probably, oh, he's going to splash around. That in there's probably a little bigger than the one that's on the front. I'm going to set him back a second. And we'll see. This one up here, get him going. Hopefully this one left the bait on. And it looks like he did not. He threw the bait off too. You know, white bass is normally a tough bait. You normally get a few fish off each piece just because it's so hard for them to rip off the hook. But these fish this morning here have done some damage on me. This one here is not wanting to... There. There we go, fish. You can spin right there and get yourself calm. We'll hold you up and show you off to the world. Let's turn you around this way so you'll be in the light there. There he is. Just a little, little blue cat. Send him out of here. Now let's land this second fish of the double. About cookie cutter size. These deeper holes on the main channel ledges have done me well lately. I've got some really good fish. Really over the last month here in August, today's the, I don't know, 20 something of August. And really this whole month, I have done well on these deep holes, but we did have some, now this fish, look at him, showing out for the camera. It's a little temper tantrum here. It's a little temper tantrum. And I was trying to say, we got some rain a few days ago. And so, there he is in the light. Get out of here. I shouldn't even show you off of the camera the way he's acting right there. Rewarding bad behavior for that. But, uh, no, y'all, we had some rain recently, quite a bit of it. And what it has done here, if you notice on my graph, it has lowered our water temperature a few degrees, our surface temps anyway, and it's created a little bit more flow 
TVA, you know, was moving some more water through the dam, especially during the morning hours. Normally I come out in the mornings, in these summer months, I don't have any flow. They usually start generating mid-morning and then it picks up through the day. But recently, because of the rain, we've had some flow just 24-7. Now down here where I'm at today, I'm kind of in between two dams here on the Tennessee River. So with as deep and as wide as this river is, there's not a lot of noticeable flow out here this morning. But it's more than what we normally have. And any amount of flow will get your scent trail moving downstream and allow fish that are downriver from you to pick up on the trail and come find your bait. So it's definitely helpful. But I don't know with the change in water temps and the extra uh, rain and flow, did it mess up this bite that's been in the hole? I don't know. I, I was on kind of a consistent weather and water condition pattern there, and now that's changed a little bit, so did the fish change with it? I don't know. We'll see, won't we? But anyway, enough of me, Gavin. I gotta get some more baits down there, and we'll catch us some more. Well, guys, I just realized I didn't have my camera going, so you didn't see the piece of white bass that I just dropped down. But here is a white bass head. I'm going to lower it down, and then I'm going to replace that bluegill on my other back rod over here. And I think I'll have all my lines reset again after that little flurry of activity. My other bluegill here on my back left rod is, looks like he's got a little weight on there. He's either swimming hard or something's got him. So I may just go ahead and reel him in. Yeah, there's definitely something on there. There's definitely something on there. Oh, that one's a pulling now. That one's a pulling. That's a better fish. That's better than anything we've got so far. On the live bluegill. But anyway, I got my my two front rods are reset now. The white bass head and midsection. And I got to put another live bluegill on the back rod here when I get this one in. But this one's definitely a a little bit better quality fish than anything I've gotten out here thus far. Look at that. My white bass head just went down. I just dropped it down. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> that rod tip's in the water, man. You know, I'm just going to deal with the one in the hand. This is where I need a second set of arms out here, y'all. One of y'all needs to come through the screen. Look at this one now. I'm tripled up. One of y'all, I need two of you to come through the screen right now and help me. Help me reel in some fish, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna deal with the one in the hand because he feels good, man. He's pulling again. My drag's set tight. I keep my drag pretty well locked down on these reels. You know, there's 15 pounds or so of pressure. And that right there was taking a little bit. <laughs> I've said this before in some other videos. My buddy Daniel just recently had a rod, a whole rod holder, everything just ripped off his kayak. And so I've mentioned before, it's like, make sure on your kayak you have sturdy rod holders. Make sure they're bolted in because when you're in a situation like this and you're doubled or tripled up and you've got one rod tip in the water and another one in your hand, you've got to be able to trust your rod holders and know that they're going to be able to hold up to whatever size of fish you got on. I don't know. I, I should be getting close on this in here. I spot locked here while I was getting rebaited. I'm currently 72 feet deep. Just, you know, working my, oh my gosh, he let it go right there. He let it go right there. I fought him all the way to the surface. I never got a look at him and he let it go. Oh my gosh. That's, oh. let's pick up on this one now. Well, that's frustrating. Makes me wonder if he even had the hook to begin with. You know, he may have just been clamped down on that bluegill. The bluegill's gone. Ripped it completely off. Crap, man, that fish felt good. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to have landed that one. Daggone it. I don't know what happened with that. Things go wrong sometimes, y'all, and that's one of them situations. Things just went wrong. But nevertheless, I'm on some fish here. I still got that one on the other front rod up there. I'm gonna get this one up the surface and I'll reel it in. This I this one here in my hand, 
I ain't as big. I ain't got to look at him yet, but I promise you he ain't as big as the one that was that had ate that live bluegill. This ain't a bad fish. This is a fun sizer. He's got another fish with him down there too. There's another fish with him down there. I'm gonna see if I can get my other underwater camera going here and, and see if we can see that other fish if he's still there. All right, guys, there he is. That is a nice blue cat. That's a what I call a larger fun sizer right there. I got my measuring board here with me for the tournaments I'm in, so we'll throw him on there and get a length on him in just a second. But before I do that, I'm just going to set him back in the rod holder again. And I'm going to see if this one here is still on. Man, as nice as that fish is, as happy as I am to get him, he does not live up to the size of that one I lost. That just, for whatever reason, come unbuttoned. That's just frustrating. It's always the ones that get away that, that stick with you. You know, when I catch a big fish, uh, as soon as I'm done with it, I'm excited, I'm happy, but then I'm immediately on to the next one. You know, I'm thinking about the fish, the next fish that's going to bite. But them ones that get away, those, those stick with you a little while. Yeah, this is another, just the dink right here. Okay, well, let's leave him setting too, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because um, right now, with those two fish on my front rods, this rod I hadn't rebaited, and the bluegill got stripped off there with the larger fish that I lost, so I'm going to rebate these back two rods, then we'll land the front ones, that way I can go ahead and get some baits down there, because, you know, where I'm at here, I just, I don't see any more fish there under me, but there's clearly some fish here in this area, so I want to have a bait down there for them. All right. Let's hook us a bluegill here. Live bluegill, y'all. There he is. Bluegill, do me proud. Bye-bye, little buddy. I'm going to drop him here off this side. And then we'll get us another one. I don't remember how many bluegill I had in that bucket. I think it was around six or eight. But... Uh, Hopefully we're going to go through them today. I just wanted to come out here with a variety, you know, just have some live baits along with my cut bait and just offer these fish options. I've been, you know, doing a little bit more ultralight fishing lately because I've just been in the mood. I love ultralight fishing. And so I thought, well, heck, I'm out there. I'm catching these fish. I might as well just keep a few in the bucket and bring them out here on the catfishing trip if they... If they get me a bite, great. If they don't, well, I still had the fun of catching them when I was ultralight fishing, you know. I'm a winner either way. Let's grab us another bluegill here. This one here, a little bit bigger than the other bluegill. That's a, let me hold him up here for the camera. Nice little buddy. I hope you find me something big down there to eat you. See ya. Goodbye, bluegill. We got our bluegill reset. Let's hold this one up. Man, this is actually a better fish than I thought he was now that I got him over here and about to get a hold of him. Let's bring that thing in. Yeah, y'all. I ain't got much room here with him with that bluegill bucket here in the floor of my kayak. That's a better fish than what I thought. I'm getting the headpiece back on him too. That's what he eats there, that white bass head dang near as soon as I dropped it down. It was in there. And there he is. Look at that thing, man. That's a nice fish, buddy. I bet you he's 38, 40 inches long. We'll throw him on the board here and find out. But man, that's a that's a solid fish, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. Let me just go straight the board with him and get that bait back down. Buddy, I was dead on. Look at that. Almost 40 inches. Just shy of it. That's a solid fish, man. Dark, too. He's a dark gray color on top. Nice. Okay. One last look. I got to land this other one up here. I'm probably going to drop this bait down again before I do that. And, uh, yeah, man, that's awesome. <laughs> this right here is what I come out here hoping to find today. All right, buddy. How you going? Okay. 
let me just pull my bait up here make sure it's hooked okay yes sir yeah i'm gonna rehook this bait he's ripped the mouth there a little bit but i'm just gonna come out the other nostril and i'm good to go again that meat in there everything's still looking good from where it hadn't been down there but just a few seconds didn't have time to get chewed up by small fish or or bled out in the current or anything because he was on it almost immediately oh right here you see that that bluegill back there's gotten eaten while i was dropping this bait down <laughs> this other fish on the front rod's gonna have to wait oh we got him we got him <laughs> Oh, it's awesome, man. I'm on some fish right here. I don't see anything on the graph, y'all. But there's clearly fish here. Because I'm catching them. <laughs> I get asked that a lot, you know, do I go looking for fish on the graph? Do I see fish on I see fish on there occasionally. And I pay attention to it, but when I come out here today, I'll come out here to fish this section of the river, this outside bend, and, and fish these holes down here. I don't care if I see fish on the graph because I know fish should be here. I'm fishing where I'm fishing places where fish should be. I don't go around just looking for them on my graph. I'm in a kayak. I can't cover that much water. You know, I can't. I can't do that. I don't have that luxury. This one here is just a small blue that wasted our bluegill. He's just a little old thing. Let's just go ahead and land him and get him gone before we pick up on the other one up there. Oh, oh, quit, quit, oh, you, that's uncalled for. You just, you showing out for no good reason. These people watching at home on the YouTube here, they wanted, to, look, he won't open his mouth for nothing. I done have that hook out. Let me get my pliers on him here since he don't want to be cooperative. There, fish these people on the YouTube was wanting to see you today and you act like that. You owe him an apology. I hope you send them all a, a I'm sorry card. He said, heck with that. He's going to splash me on the way out too. Let's get this one going. And then we're going to get everything just reset here. I got, let's see, I got the headpiece down. I got that other bluegill down. So I need a white bass midsection and another live bluegill. This one here. Another one that's just ornery. Just ornery this morning. One thing about it, these fish are fired up today. Fish, if you'll calm down, you can see the front camera there. He ain't gonna calm down. He says he don't give a crap about that front camera. <laughs> okay, well, y'all, it's fun when it's like this, man. I, I preach it all the time about, you know, fishing out of a kayak, especially spin fishing where your baits are just straight down under you. When you get these violent takedowns, you get that kind of rocking feeling in the kayak. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. But when you have days like today where you're fighting one fish and another rod goes down and then the next rod goes down and you doubled and tripled up, it's a lot of fun. It's really exciting. Let's just go ahead though and see if we can keep the momentum going here. Put another one of these bluegill on. I don't feel very many down in there. I know there's at least one more down in there. I don't know. I'll have to... Well, this thing here, he's wound up, ain't he? There he is, y'all. Bluegill going down. See ya, buddy. You know, and I've had people, too. I'll say this while this one's falling down. People lecture me in the comments about my live bait about dropping them down too quickly and not giving them time to decompress on the way down so you know they end up dying quicker i'll be honest with you i don't worry about that kind of thing because if i got a live bait that's down there an hour hour and a half without getting bit i'm in the wrong spot so if, if my live baits don't get bitten and killed quickly i'm doing something wrong anyway so I don't worry about lowering them down slowly or, or you know, letting them decompress. I don't fool with any of that. I get them down there as quick as possible so they can be eaten as quick as possible. Look at this. Look at this, y'all. I'm cutting up my other piece of white bass. I'm hooked up again, man. That's on that white bass head that I just dropped down. This, feels, this is another one that feels pretty good. 
again i don't see a daggone thing on my graph but there's clearly a fish right under me right now that's pulling buddy <laughs> i'm telling you y'all man when you can't get all your i got four rods and when i can't get them all baited before the next one goes down that's a good day man that thing has got that rod bent buddy that feels good i wonder if this ain't a flathead maybe i didn't feel no you know violent hit it was just kind of a he just kind of took the rod over there while i was cutting that other bait up i'd love to get a flathead out here today i've been getting some lately they've been that's been on with them i'm still spy locked right here y'all i ain't moving until these fish quit biting you know i was going to come out here and cover water today but the perk of having this gps function on this electric motor is when i get on a bite man this thing just keeps pulling buddy again my drag's locked down but when i get on fish like this just hit that button and sit right there just on top of them until they move on this one here man this is a strong fish this is this is a strong fish if i ain't felt no rolling this is either a really good blue or a flathead and i'm i'd almost bet you money it's a flathead <laughs> y'all just if y'all could experience this one time i'd turn every one of you into a kayak fisherman you know you can't you're not going to catch as many fish in a kayak as what you will in a boat you just won't you can't cover the water you can't fish as in, in as bad of conditions catching bait obviously isn't as easy because you can't get up there to dams and in faster currents and stuff so if you just after the most amount of fish by all means get a boat but if you want to have the most fun possible with the fish you catch they just ain't a better they ain't a better way to have fun than fishing in a kayak and you just hang on and enjoy the ride <laughs> man this is a strong fish i'm just i ain't really made any progress on him y'all i'm just hanging on he just keeps taking a little bit of drag at a time i'm just hanging on and letting him do his thing he'll tire out eventually either he'll tire out or i'll tire out one of us will give up but I ain't never quit on a fish yet. <laughs> I've had them come free, but I'm undefeated on outlasting them. Yeah, y'all, I'm sorry. For those of you, you know, that enjoy the commentary, you know, as I'm fighting the fish, I'm out. I'm out of stuff to say, y'all. I'm just going to have to just hang on here and enjoy the fight till i make some more progress on this fish because i'm just out fish has fought me so long i'm speechless <laughs> i finally see a mark here on the graph now i think that's him that i'm bringing up i believe i've got him about 30 feet deep here i'm hoping these other rods here go down behind me too i really think this is a flathead man i, I really do i'm going to be surprised if it ain't a flathead then it's a really big blue because it has not started rolling yet and normally blues are rolling at this point in the fight unless it's just a a whopper whatever this is is a whopper that's for dang sure now my back rod over here is going down but this this fish has gotten in it on the way up that's not another fish oh that's a big flathead big old flathead right there man i knew that was a flathead i knew it it just did not act like a did not act like a blue man oh man look at the head on that thing man that is a wide fish holy cow i'm gonna try to land this thing let me just get down here and get hold of him oh man that's a big one buddy that's a big one. I ain't got room to put him here with that daggone bluegill bucket. That's all right. Oh, man, that's awesome. 
That's awesome, y'all. I don't know where my pliers at. There they are. I'm just all discombobulated, man. I'm pumped up about this fish. Oh, man. <laughs> I gotta get this other line out from under him. I don't even care about that right now. Holy cow. Beast mode, baby. Oh, yeah. I'll be to set him here on my lap a second. I get to the line. There he goes. Oh, oh, 70 feet deep flathead. Had two, had two live baits right there just a few feet away. You saw what he ate, a white bass head to cut bait. Happens all the time, man. I like, I like having live baits out, just giving them options, but dang near every big flathead I've ever caught has come on cut bait. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> All right, let me stick him here on the board. I guarantee you this thing's over 40 inches. Just a beast of a flathead. Oh, man, that's awesome. Y'all, that fish right there, 44 inches on the line, and look how wide he is, man. That is an awesome fish. Absolutely awesome. Oh, let me get this fish back over here. I want to get some good pictures with this thing. I got to turn that camera around. I'm all discombobulated, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm excited. I love catching big flatheads, man. Whew. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this camera down. And I'm going to do the hero shot here. Let's see if I can get him all in frame. <laughs> How awesome is that? Nice, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it was an incredible battle, 44 inch flathead. I'm gonna let him go so he'll get down there even bigger. My day's made, y'all. <laughs> there he is, guys. Look at that thing, man. Look how wide his head is, man. That's a wide fish. He's got me wore out. I'm out of breath. We'll see you, flathead. Take off for me there. He just swimming off at his own time. Heck with that camera. I gotta rest a minute, y'all. That was freaking awesome, man. Y'all, my morning's made. My week is made. I just, I got a boat coming here. I hope they didn't see me catch that fish. They'll be set up here for a month. <laughs> I'm so pumped up. But again, y'all, live bait versus cut bait for these flatheads. You know, people tell me in the comments all the time, Justin, you got to use live bait for big flatheads. And maybe in a lot of places, maybe you do. But out here, while well, I'm fishing deep structure, all my biggest flatheads come on cut bait. And in situations like today, you know, where I've got that white bass head there, from there to there on that live bluegill, I mean, you're talking a few feet, you know what, I don't know, 10 feet, 12 feet apart. He could have had his choice, chose the cut bait. But ultimately, don't matter to me what bait they pick, as long as they bite one with a hook in it, and that one did. Whew. All right, well, I'm gonna get myself reset. Honestly, I can't remember I'm gonna have to check this bait because he, he got right tied up in that line. May have thrown the bait off. These other two, I was gonna rebait one, I don't remember. I'm <laughs> I'm so discombobulated. I got I definitely gotta lower this one down. I'm just messed up, y'all. I'm pumped up, I'm excited. Hard for me to focus on the YouTube video when I'm this excited, you know. I just I get some flatheads, but Pretty rare, you know, me to get one that size. That rod right there. Look at it. It was getting hit too. I want to get these other baits back down here first. I got to get this one's line entangled here. <laughs> I'm just pumped up, y'all. Bear with me. I'll get it together here directly. All right, that bait's back there in good shape. It's going back down. I'm going to catch another one on that. I'm going to lower this bait down for now, y'all. But I'm doing something right now. People have, you know, requested stuff that I've used in videos. You know, little 
mementos and collectibles and things like that. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, before this video ends today, I'm going to clip this leader off. And this hook is going to be available to one of you all. I got a friend that's helping me put together some stuff, like make stuff suitable for framing. And, uh, you know, you'll have the hook and leader, uh, whatever we end up doing with it, that caught that big flathead. So, you know, kind of just a you know, one-of-a-kind thing here that's this video that you can look back on with your friends and family or whatever and say, hey, I've got a piece of artifact, memorabilia, whatever you want to call it, from this video. So uh, I'm going to be keeping that, but I'm going to see if I can get another fish on it there before we, before we clip it off. Oh, I think I got another fish right here on this bluegill. I was just going to really in check him, make sure I still had a bait on. I thought that flathead might have knocked him off, but I've got another fish on here. <laughs> I'm just sitting on a pile of fish. Ah, this is another dink blue right here. Another dinkity doo -dah. This one over here, I don't know if he's still on or not on the other rod behind me. I still ain't got around to checking him yet. I'm gonna have to bring this one in. This one here's gotta be brought in because he's hooked through the bottom lip. My gosh, this rod right here, y'all, the white bass head's going down again. Look at that. I hope you can see it right there. I gotta get rid of this fish right quick. I ain't got my chest cam. My chest cam's laying the floor of my kayak. I'm just on some fish. Okay, here's this one. He gone. The soggy fish. I didn't mean to throw him over there that hard. I mean, I didn't mean to. That camera's still going. Let's reel in another one on this same white bass head. Y'all, whoever ends up with this hook, buddy, it's got its use. I'd set this one on a shelf. I wouldn't take it out and tie it on because it's going to be used up. <laughs> Man, I'm having a good time. I still, I don't see any fish on the graph here, y'all. Nothing. But they're here. they under me. I'm having a dang good time, buddy. Dang good time. I think I may go live out here this morning, y'all. The day I've got a video now, a regularly, you know, regular video to be edited. It's probably going to run long with the number and size of fish I've caught. I may just hop on a live stream and see if I can get some of these fish live for you. If you're seeing this video, you're obviously, if I did go live, you're seeing this video after the fact. My regularly scheduled videos are about a week behind. I film this week for next week's videos, if that makes sense. So if I go live today, obviously you're seeing this video a week later. I think I may do it since I got all these fish here. It's nice when you go live to actually be catching some fish. That's another good blue. Look at him right there, man. Oh, he ain't happy. He ain't happy. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna leave him setting. He can tire himself out with that kind of energy. I wanna get some more baits down. Let me get this one going here. I remember now I was hooking, I was cutting up the piece of white bass when that flathead hit. So <laughs> I ain't had no bait up here on this other front rod. What can you do though? You can just, I ain't got but two arms. I can't reel in but one at a time. I love this. There ain't nothing else I'd rather be doing right now than being out here catching these fish. I hope you all, I hope some of you out there anyway that enjoy these videos just a fraction of as much as what I enjoy being out here and making them for you. Because I love doing this. Here's this bait going down. I'm going to get this reset, I'm going to land this big blue, and then we'll figure out if we want to go live or not. I don't even know what time it is. Probably ate something by now. I got out here at first light and uh, had lines in. That's how I like to do it. You take advantage of this morning, but there's oftentimes just a window of time in the mornings 
around dawn that for whatever reason fish just turn on and feed and if you're on the water you got a chance at them. I ain't a morning person but I love catching fish it motivates me to get up early and come out I do have a fish here on this live bluegill sure as the world I'll reel him up before I land the other one man oh man I think I got one or two more bluegill in that bucket I'll save it probably for the live stream just a small fish right there boy the small fish have gobbled up them live baits but it's been the the cut baits that's got it done other than that one that one I lost was a dang good fish on that bluegill we'll never know what it was blue or flathead all I know was that it felt really good all right there's that little guy he gone now let's land this old blue cat over here okay let's bring that on in why don't we man that's a solid fish too it's a white bass head and white bass man i've been catching some really good fish now i live in tennessee we're allowed to use white bass or any other sport fish so long as it's caught on rod and reel and meets the krill requirements that is not the case in every state so those of you that don't live in tennessee that watch my videos check your local laws and regulations before you go out just willy-nilly using whatever you want you liable to end up with a ticket if you don't look at that man that's another solid fish oh man i've had so much fun already today i love it buddy all right one last look let me throw him on the board here for you he ain't gonna measure up to that flathead but he's probably 36 38 inches heck no i've lied to you he's over 40. he's almost 41 inches that's a long fish not quite as big as that other blue earlier that was that was around the 40 inch mark but still a dang nice fish ain't it <laughs> all right guys one last look at the blue how he going see you buddy i got a boat up here man if he's got him some binoculars he's had a heck of a show but i think i'm gonna try to put on a heck of a show on the live stream i guess i'll tell you what i'm gonna do one of two things is gonna happen y'all i'm either going to i'm gonna end this video and uh i'm going to either go live if i've got the cell phone service out here and try to catch some more on the live stream or i'm just gonna film another video on this spot because this video here is probably gosh 30 45 minutes long with the fish that i've caught so uh either way i'm gonna try to do another video out here right now but what I'm going to do first, again, I mentioned this may be, you know, the dumbest idea ever, but I've had people reaching out and just, you know, wanting stuff, uh, wanting stuff that I've used, you know, from the, from the channel here and, you know, pictures and autographs and stuff. It's, it's, it's weird to me that that happens, but, you know, my channel has gotten bigger and uh you know i get a lot of positive messages and feedback about it and people you know some people's into that kind of thing and so what i'm going to do that this leader here that uh that big flathead ate we're going to save that and i'm going to you know again i got a friend that's helped me going to put together you know like picture title of the video upload date logo all that kind of stuff and just make it into something hopefully make it into something cool looking that somebody would want to have or set on a shelf or collect or whatever so uh, we're going to do something with that whether it's the whole leader uh, the hook itself you know i don't know but stay tuned something's coming with this hook but i'm going to put this off to the side over here i'm going to put it down my hatch and uh we'll save that that's going to be somebody's but anyway y'all i'm going to wrap up this video i've had an awesome trip out here let me just see what time it is it's 8.58 right now. So from dawn to now, you've seen how many fish I've caught, quality of fish I've caught, and it's just, again, keeping my baits on good structure. I didn't come out here looking for fish on the graph. I came out here to fish this area because I knew there should be fish here. 
just based on the structure. An outside river bend with some deep holes, they ain't a bad time to fish them ever. There's almost always some cats there, and boy, there has been today. Anyway, though, guys, thank you for watching. If you've sat through this long, thank you. And, uh, yeah, you're going to see another video either on this spot from the live stream or a separate edited video real soon. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. This is a dang whopper right there. Holy cow, look at that. Man, that's a nice fish for the live stream, ain't it? <laughs> it's probably a little after 10 o'clock right now. That's a dang whopper, man. Heck yeah.